Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Powerful possibilities that the grace of God might touch our lives and finally give us peace. Yeah. We so much need that. Our uh, gospel lesson for today involves some things beyond peace. <laughs> A little antagonism, rage, and uh, uh, confrontational kinds of things. It's a story which has uh, some powerful implications and possibilities when we uh, think through the implication of all that's being said uh, and done there. <clears throat> as you uh, remember, uh, Jesus says as he comes to these people, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Wonderful words. So why does it bring controversy to Jesus' life when he talks, uh, does it and talks about it. The problem was, it was those other people, those foreigners, not us Hebrew people, uh, the ones who have God with us and yeah, he's gonna bring all this good stuff to us. And the implication from what Jesus is doing and saying is it's for them. It's finally for all people. Gets into the whole problem of every religious organization. We think we have the priority with God and Christian community has done this too. Those who don't understand like we do, we can even kill them, wipe them out. They're worthless, they're no good. It's a whole no way of understanding life. Life in community, the world community, all of God's creation, instead of this self-centered kind, of, kind of thing. It's for us. We're the ones on top. And the others, well, they're just not worth anything. It's, it's a danger of all humanity, isn't it? We so easily write off those kind of people. If the essence of the kingdom of God, of the creation of God's world, is for all people to be taken care of and made well, made whole, then you can't write in certain people off. Then we become the evil people, don't we? It's the problem of war. Oh, those people are gonna kill us. We gotta kill them. Wait a minute. Jesus goes so far as to say, love your enemies. Oh. How do you love your enemies? How do you find a way of building a relationship in such a way that they're no longer your enemies? The better question is, is what's the conflict all about? How do we resolve the conflict? How do we find a way of taking care and bringing wholeness and goodness to those people also. Jesus says, do not kill. <laughs> yeah, it's in the commandments too. Yeah. So, 
how do you find some way of building a relationship, a compassionate relationship for those who appear to want to harm you? Yeah. So easily, here the, the, the message was, you know, the, take care of the poor, poor will no longer be hungry, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, how, do, how do we do that? Instead of writing them off, well, if they just did it like I did, they, they wouldn't be hungry. You know, uh, well, maybe, uh, yeah, they're on drugs or something. Uh, so that takes care of that. Uh, we, we can't help them. Wow. We so easily end up in that self-centered kind of thing that God is only for me, or particularly for me. Like he isn't the same way for all those other people. In a church community, it is so easy for us in our relationship with God to think of that we are the ones that deserve this because we've said, hello, God. You know. and, uh, and so we are then superior and we get all the good stuff and God is punishing those people out there. Is it God that's so punishing those people? Or is it society, which is structured in such a way that those people can't get taken care of, are in an environment which is basically self-destructive? If all of those people are to be set free in the day of the Lord, if that's what Jesus is declaring here when he comes on to the scene here, then if we are a part of the presence of God, that's what we should be doing. Huh? So we easily get turned on to ourselves. When I think in congregational life, uh, I always get kind of nervous when it's budget time. Okay. This particular church took a powerful risk, great risk, when it built the structures. I mean, we had more indebtedness than uh, per capita than any other congregation in, in, in our synod, maybe in the, in the whole church at the time. And we got through it. And we think, oh, God blessed us. Uh -huh. For what? For, for us to become the presence of God in the world. So the job was not over. The blessing was, did not end when uh, this place was built. And it's so that we got all these nice things, great staff and all kinds of stuff. The fulfillment is when we are turned to bring the blessings of God to all people. So at budget time, when it uh, can begin in the beginning of a congregation to be this great possibility for the future, gets earned so easily into, well, how do we take care of ourselves now? Um, I don't know if we can do those kinds of things because we have all these expenses here that we've got to take care of. <laughs> we get turned in on ourselves instead of turned out, which reflects the presence of God 
when we are turned out from ourselves to the care of all of God's creation, to be a part of the creative force of life, to bring wholeness and goodness to all people. To drug addicts, people who have committed crimes. Yeah, that, that's all in there. So easy to write those kinds of things off. And then we're not in a mission of doing the will of God, but the mission of caring for ourselves. That conflict is what was going on here with Jesus. And the boy, they, they were... They're ready to kill him. It's interesting, isn't it? Jesus didn't turn the power of God and put him to death. He passes through. Like the mystery of God protecting him. But whatever. He doesn't return anger for anger. And continues to move ahead with the year of the Lord's favor for all people. When we are touched by the Spirit of God, that becomes our mission in life. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus.